In Borderlands 2, there was a secondary currency added to the game, Iridium. Iridium is a lot rarer than the usual money drops and was added to the game to have a better, more consistent way to get the storage deck upgrades instead of having to find random claptraps for backpack space like in BO1. This was a good solution to that problem and because of that, Iridium was here to stay. But what happens after you have all your SDUs? What use do you have for this currency after everything is said and done? What's going on? I'm Cashew and this is the inevitable problem with Iridium in Borderlands. So continuing on with Borderlands 2, Gearbox did try to answer this question. Firstly, by adding in more available backpack space at Crazy Earls, but this was never going to fix the problem for long. After players bought the new upgrades, Iridium was back to being useless. The answer that ended up being the main play was actually in the game at launch. After you beat the game, you unlock quests that leads you to the game's first raid boss, Terramorphus the Invincible. But to enter his lair at Terramorphus Peak, you must first pay 8 Iridium to enter. Once you entered, you could fight Terra as many times as you wanted, but if you left and came back, you would have to pay the toll again. So that was it? The problem was solved? Sort of. With every DLC adding new raids, the Iridium cost was altered. First, so that every kill, you'd have to pay again, and second, having some of the raids now cost 20 Iridium. But all of these bosses do drop more than 8 to 20 Iridium on kill, so you really don't have a reason to not have your Iridium maxed out at 500 at all times when in the endgame. So knowing this, enter DLC 3, Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt. This DLC does feature the raid style we've seen in the other DLC raids, but that was only for one of them, Veracidus. The other raid was Gearbox's next answer to the Iridium problem, Dexidious. To spawn Dexy, you have to pay a large sum of Iridium at four different posts throughout the Hunter's Grotto, then pull a lever and fight a few waves of enemies. This takes a very long time, but what's almost worse is that it costs give or take a hundred Iridium. And on top of that, Dexy doesn't even drop that much Iridium compared to the other raids. This basically means if you want to legit farm Dexy, the max amount of runs you can get out of it is 5, only being the case if you started the farm with max Iridium capacity. Thankfully no raids after Dexy were this bad, but it kind of showed that players would either have max Iridium and it would basically be useless, or there wouldn't be enough and not having it would lock you out of content. They needed to strike a middle ground, but seeing this, that's gonna be pretty hard. They did it, then took one game, yeah they fixed it, yep. In Borderlands the pre-sequel, instead of Iridium, there are Moonstones, but they function the exact same, with it being how you get more backpack and ammo capacity. Like in BL2, they are also used to summon raid bosses, but that's far from their main use since pre-sequel only has the one raid. Their real use is with the grinder, a pre-sequel exclusive mechanic that lets you combine three guns into one to hopefully get a better one out of it. If you use moonstones while grinding, you are guaranteed to get the best result item from your recipe. This made farming legendaries a lot easier, and it was also how you got the best versions of them. Even after parts and prefixes, if you moonstone grind a gun, you had a chance to receive a loon shine. Loon shines were a buff to a weapon that were basically mini anointments before they were a thing. And you could get some really useful ones too, like being able to shoot through shields or even getting more grenade damage while holding the gun, which also buffed TDO chocks, making them even better than was already thought. Pre-Sequel also had a lot of ways to get the Moonstones too. They had a much higher drop rate from regular enemies than Iridium ever did, while also having loads drop from the harder bosses like Iwajira and the Sentinel. Pre-Sequel really solved the problem with the grinder. There was just one issue. The people hated the grinder. Now, I'll forever be known as a grinder apologist, but it really is worth mentioning that the grinder was a big factor for why a lot of people just couldn't get into the pre-sequel. Having the grinder there made the devs want the player to use it, and that meant having most legendaries not have any drop source to incentivize using the grinder. So unless they found a way to rework it, spoiler they didn't, they would need to find a new way to use Iridium. Enter Borderlands 3. Iridium is back and no longer how you get storage deck upgrades. You now purchase those with money and Iridium is now used for Crazy Earl's shop where you can buy cosmetics. You would think that this would lower the use of Iridium immediately, but the fact that there are so many cosmetics cosmetics to buy in BL3 means that you will not run out of stuff in the shop for a long time. Another thing you'll notice is that A, Iridium is a lot easier to get in this game, and B, everything in Earl's shop is a lot more expensive if comparing it to the last games. Your Iridium carrying capacity has now gone from 500 all the way to 9999999999, so you'll be able to stock it for basically forever. That wasn't its only use at launch though, right next to Crazy Earl is his very own vending machine. This vendor allows you to use Iridium to buy weapons as well as past quest rewards that you've unlocked. Honestly, a banger idea, but since 
since I never really used the quest rewards in BO3, I never use this machine. I think since legendaries are so easy to get in BO3, it just makes mission rewards and lower end guns seem kind of pointless. But that's more of a core issue with the game entirely, so moving on. There was one final use for Iridium at launch, and that was the gun gun, or if you're lame, the Iridium Fabricator. This cannon uses Iridium in your inventory, then spits out a bunch of guns. It was a cool novelty at launch, but it never really gave that much high rarity gear. That was until an update that gave it a legendary mode. This mode would spend way more Iridium, but now would give you guaranteed legendaries. And I actually use this, mainly when I've just completed the story and go to start Mayhem mode. If you switch to Mayhem mode, then use the gun gun, it will spit out guns on level with whatever current Mayhem level you choose. This makes it very easy to just get some on level guns and skip the end game progression so you can just get the best XP and rewards straight away. With all of these, Iridium had pretty fair usage across the game, and if it ended there, I don't think people would have any problem with Iridium at all in Borderlands 3, but it didn't end there. No, Borderlands 3 kept pushing it, and we witnessed a complete pendulum swing of the problem. What caused this was the anointment reroll machine. This, on the surface, feels like a perfect answer to the Iridium problem, since getting the wrong anointment on your weapon was a massive annoyance to players. It kind of felt like the grinder's loon shine, but streamlined and made way more useful. So what's the problem? The price. The cost of rerolling one anointment is 250 Iridium. And remember, it's not 250 Iridium to choose the anoint you want, it's 250 Iridium to get a random, more than likely useless, anoint. Me and many other players have spent hours farming Iridium just to spend it all on not even getting the anoint we wanted. This single-handedly decimated Borderlands 3's Iridium economy. Since now that you're saving up for anoints that you're probably not going to get, you can't waste any on cosmetics or even the gun gun's loot. And they weren't even done. In Borderlands 3's final DLC, the designer's cut, we finally got the game's first traditional raid boss. And to fight at once, five... 100 Iridium. This was just ridiculous, and gate kept players from playing the content that they paid for. What we have learned from this is that it's way better to have an overabundance of Iridium rather than to never have enough. For the next game, I'm sure they'll think of some new uses for Iridium, but what's best is something that doesn't affect the overall economy too much, but is still a constant price. In Wonderlands, the reroll machine was reworked with its own currency, and it's so much better there. I still think, though, that Iridium makes sense to use there, it just needs to be a way lower price. 50 Iridium feels like a good balance for it in my opinion, maybe even lower. So if Anoints return for Borderlands 4, I hope the Reroller does too with a much lowered price. I think as far as uses for Iridium goes, we should definitely keep Raid Gates. I'm thinking 8 Iridium per kill, or 20 Iridium to get access to the whole area and farm the raid as many times as you want. Earl's Quest Reward Vendor should stay as well, but the only thing that's truly up in the air is if Iridium will return as how you purchase SDUs. I I prefer BO2 ways of doing it as I've always run a low on money in the modern Borderlands games early game, but that's just me. But do let me know what you think Iridium should be used for in the next Borderlands game. If you want to help support this small Borderlands creator, I'd appreciate any likes or subs that I could get, but thank you so much for watching the video. And let's do the channel member shoutouts. My channel members are JBH, who finally did it. We've been following his progress for weeks, and oh, we couldn't be more proud of him. He fucking did it. Let's go. Wesker520, who has a humble shack in the woods that treats anyone who finds it to a nice steak dinner. Angel B, who doesn't use too many big words. It's absolutely preposterous that you would even consider such a deliberation, bro. Chimpy Scrimpy, who is working tirelessly to unionize the vigilantes of his neighborhood. Jade Nature, who is basically Ferris Bueller if he knew how to roller skate, so basically just way cooler. Noel Rollins, who has yet to ever say anything wrong about anything. But they did say the Borderlands movie was going to be good, so those days might be coming to an end. Handsome Frank 63, who can play the pan flute with his nose while simultaneously playing the saxophone normally. National treasure for sure. Carl Lowell McGinnis, who faked their own death to see who would show up to the funeral, and it turns out, like, everyone did, including, like, all the world leaders. So he has to now stay hidden in an effort to keep world peace. And Dryptofen, who sailed all seven seas just to see that there was, like, at least three more over the horizon that they now are to sail. Son of a bitch. Thank you guys so much for the support. There are, like, so many of you now, and I'm kind of regretting this whole, like, say a cool thing at the end, because, wow, it's making the videos longer. But thank you guys so much for the support. I really, really appreciate you giving me the extra buck. If you also want to help me out and get a cool shout out at the end of the video, the join button is right below the video there. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.